If you have a process layout, then when you are looking at your facilities, so let's say here's your building, you need to decide what department is going to be located where. And when it has process, when you have a process layout, you need to recognize that not all of your work in process will follow the same um, process or a uh, movement through your facility. Some of your material might go this way, others might go that way, depending on what needs to be done. So process layouts are used for services. They are used when there is variety in the products that you're producing. So each step is not the same for each product. So you take the inventory, the work in process, to where it needs to be for the jobs that need to be done. Well, as part of this, we need to figure out the location of those different departments. What we want to look at now is the closeness ratings or systematic layout planning method. This systematic layout planning method or closeness ratings were created by a guy named Richard Muther. And what they do is they look at which departments can and can't be next to each other based on preset criteria. So let's just move a bit forward here in the slides to our discussion on those closeness ratings. And what you see here is you see a diagram that shows in this case six different departments. And you see on this diagram we have A's, E's, and X's. A's are the departments that absolutely must be next to each other. E's, it's important that they're next to each other, but not critical. So if given the option, uh, we need to put them next to each other if we can, but if we can't, um, they're kind of second priority compared to the A's. The X's are the departments that absolutely cannot be near each other. So maybe it is unsafe work conditions for these two departments to be near each other. For example, if you're a body shop, the departments like uh, where your customers go to pay cannot be next to where you are spraying toxic paint, right? Unsafe conditions, so you need to keep them separated. Maybe there's separate ventilation, for example. So you may have a number of criteria that decides whether something absolutely must be next to another department, so an A is important but not critical, an E, or is cannot is be next to each other at all. It's undesirable, an X. These may be factors such as whether or not they use the same equipment, do they share some of the same personnel, we can look at the level of workflow between, the level of communication, um, if similar jobs are performed, and then of course if there is unsafe or unpleasant conditions if departments are near each other. So what we do is we take this diagram that shows the A's, the E's, and the X's and we can use it to lay out our facility. So let's suppose that our facility, so here's our six locations and here's they would how they would be laid out. What we need to do first is identify the pairs of A's, E's, and X's. And let's go back. So how do you figure out if something is an A? Well, if you look here at this box that has an A, notice that one of the sides of the box points to department one and the other side of the box points to department two. So one and two, that pair is an A. If we look at this A here, notice that this side of the box goes to department one and this one goes to department three. So here we have an A for one and three. Now we have an E here. Notice that the edges of this E box, one goes to two, and one of the edges goes to department three. So department two and department three are E's. Two, three is an E. Here we have an X. One edge of the X box goes to department one. The other edge of the X box goes to department four. So one and four cannot be near each other. Let's look at this X here. 
The edge of this X box goes to department 3. The other edge goes to 4, so 3 and 4 cannot be near each other. Let's go and do the rest of them. Here's A. So department 3 and department 5 are A's. When it comes to the A that we see here, this is department 2 and department 6. Here we have an X and this goes with department 3 and department 6. Okay. And this A is department 4 and department 6. And the last one here is department 5 and department 6 are an A. Notice that some departments we have no preference. We don't care either way. And so there is no A or E or X for some of these combinations. So we only need to focus on what absolutely must be next to each other, what is important to be near each other, and what cannot be near each other at all. Whatever you put into this X category, this will, these are typically end up being in your corners. Okay. The other thing we want to look at is which department has the most criteria, the most restrictions. So notice as we look at these, notice that 6 appears 3 times in the A column and 1 time in the X column. So when you start to lay out your diagram, you should start with the 6 because it appears the most often, and then you want to start to kind of lay out this relationship here. So let's start with the sixes. Six and two, six and four, six and five. Those all need to be near each other. Notice that the fours also appear in the X's. So let's put four out here to the left. And we have a six and a two, we have a six and a four, and the six and a five. Okay. So here these three branches indicate that these four departments need to be touching. So we've taken care of this one and this one and this one and we put four out on the left side there because it's appearing in the X's. Okay, so we'll come back to that issue in a moment. All right, let's check out the rest of them here. We're going to need a three and a five. So let's put a three here. We're going to need a one and a three. Notice that 1 is also appearing out here in the X's along with the 3. So let's put, where is that, 1 and 3. 1 and 3 need to touch. 1 and 4 can't, so we want them to be far away from each other. Okay, 1 and 2 need to touch, so let's collect a line there. So we have 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 3 and 5. 2 and 6, 4 and 6, 5 and 6. Let's also do our 2 and our 3. Okay, And so as we are filling out this diagram here, 1 and 4 cannot be near each other, 3 and 4 cannot be near each other, and 3 and 6 cannot be near each other. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this little stick diagram here and you're going to fold it into the box. Now we fold it into the box, we want to think about taking this image here and rotating it or twisting it until it lays nicely in here. So think of these little sticks, uh, little toothpicks connecting these numbers, and you can bend them in different directions to fold them in. So let's put our 4 here in this corner because 4 has things it can't touch like the 1. And we have an issue as well that threes cannot be near anything. So likely we're going to have our ones and threes be over here because they can't be near the four and the three can't be near the six. So let's fold this in by taking this straight line here and turning it into that straight line there. Okay, so when you do that, we then need to take the rest of this piece and fold it. So we have 6 and 2 and 6 and 5, so here's the 2 and the 5, they're touching. So we maintain that piece there. 
And then we have our 3 and our 1. So remember, 5 and 3 need to touch, 3 and 1, and 2 and 1. So notice if we put 3 here and 1 there, then the 2 and 1 are still good, the 1 and 3 are still good, the 2 and 3 are still good, and essentially you can see that bit of that stick diagram folded into the box. You should always double check your x's afterwards, 1 and 4 are nowhere near each other, 3 and 4 are nowhere near each other, and 3 and 6. Now to be close to something, it can be on either side or it can be uh, at a corner as well to count. So you see how we have filled in the department based on which departments need to be next to each other, which ones cannot, using our closeness ratings. If you double check this and you find that it does not fit with X, then go back to your stick diagram and again try to fold it into the box. You should look for what can't touch each other like ones, fours, and threes here, and those should be on the outside. Six is also here. They're not always on the outsides of the box, but a good majority of them will be because that's the only way you're going to get them not uh, to interact with other departments.